Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you something interesting. What I have here is a vintage heli from 2005. Back in the day, this heli sold like hot potatoes because it costs about 99 pounds and that was considered cheap. We used to fly RC heli back then before there were drones and unfortunately, this is just a two-channel heli. It has a simple radio control with a throttle stick on the left and the roll stick on the right. Because the heli is always moving forward, as you apply roll to the right, it makes a big right turn. And if you roll left, it will make a huge left turn. So it's not really fun to fly. And if you want to hover it, you got to apply just the right amount of throttle. And with some luck, it will just hover in the same spot without spinning. Otherwise, it will just spin in the spot like a top and there's no control, there's no way you could stop the spinning because there's no rudder control here. So that's what we have back then. And on the back of the box, you could see more infographics. So we have the charger. Um, this is interesting, this is also the helipad. And back in the day, it's kind of frustrating. You have to power the charger with eight D size battery, which are expensive, really expensive. So I have eight of these expensive D cells inside the charger. And then there's a compartment here where you could put in the 9.6 volts nickel metal hydrate battery in there and it will charge. Let me do a quick unboxing and show you the stuff that's inside this box. Alright, the heli looks pretty neat with this long antenna. This must be running 27 megahertz. And yes, it's a fly bar heli. What do we have here? We have the two channel controller. It looks really toy great. An educational CD and makeup metal hybrid. Oh, it's leaking to be expected since these are more than 10 years old. This is the charger. Charging the nickel metal hydrate. Look at that. This is ridiculous. I know how it flies because I look up internet and I found this person who was very proficient at flying this heli. Took him several hours to learn how to control it. The heli was pretty much unpredictable. As you can see here, it's hovering all over the place. Yep, and that's it. I'm going to try to modify this heli to see if I could add another servo at the back for elevator and made it into a four channel hobby grade helicopter. All right, I'm going to remove the canopy using the Philips screwdriver. There's a screw here. Another one at the, at the back. Okay, and one more below, near the nose. There you go. And I'm removing the screw which holds the battery cage. If you're wondering why I'm removing the battery cage, that's because I intend to change the brush model and upgrade it to a brushless model. Last one. Alright, so now we could remove the entire landing 
skin and the battery pitch. And get this undercarriage out of the way. And yes, I can remove the cage, get that out of the way. Let me just push a bit more. Yeah. Alright, so this is how the inside looks like. And there's a radio freezer here. More screws. Alright. So I remove the circuitry. I'll keep them in case I want to use them for future projects. Here's the close up of the roll servo, and it has a lot of cables, unlike the usual three cables that we have on our regular servo. So I'm going to remove it and use a regular servo instead. I think I'll need this um, linkage. Okay, I'll keep this servo for future projects. And this is how it looks like. So we have the row action for the swatch plate. I'm going to put my own regular servo here. And next step is to remove the thumb screw so that we could add an elevator servo here. Luckily, I have this balding removal pliers. Alright, got it out. Alright, let's get the swatch plate out of the swatch guide. Yep. Alright, I have the linkage. Okay, and the thumb screw. Now we are left with this plastic structure which is redundant. So I'm going to remove it with a sharp pen knife. Alright, it looks clean now. Alright, I've finally removed the end stops, which are limiting the elevator movement of the swash plate. With those limiters removed from the swash guide, now the swash plate could move freely. Before I install the roll servo and the pitch servo, I have adjusted the linkage to the right length. And remember the thumb screws linkage earlier? It does not have this SN which we could attach to the servo horn. So here I have used a balling joint instead. That balling joint will go nicely into the ball joint here of the servo horn. And yes, this will be where the row servo will be sitting. In between these two posts. As for the pitch servo, I've 3D printed a bracket. And with this, basically it makes the servo a little bit higher. And we could mount it here on the other side. Is a close-up of the 3D printed mounting bracket. To replace the brush motor here, I have to take the chassis apart. I hope the distance between the two screws here match that of the brushless motor that I'm using. Here's a close-up of the model, and it looks like it has a 90 pinion. Let me measure the shaft size. Oh, it's 2mm. I managed to find some rare gems which I could use for this project. Here I have a Razer 350 brushless in-runner, 
The Razer models were once highly sought after because of the lightweight and high performance. They were subsequently called New Motos after the company changed the brand from Razer to New Motos. And here I also have the speed controller. This is the Align speed controller from the T Rex 250 size helicopter. The moto is able to fit in nicely onto the main chassis. Just have to readjust the pinions height. The only problem with the replacement motor here is that the screw holes are much wider. This is about 1.35 cm, whereas this is slightly under 1 cm. This means that I have to drill wider holes here. in order to install this brushless model. So since the model shelves are both 2mm, I've decided to transfer the pinion of the original model to the brushless model here. And I'll do that with a gear puller. The model pinion, I use a vice crank. Alright, here I'm using clear tape to transfer the position of the two holes. So the markings are done. And time for drilling. Finally, I've installed the brushless motor with the two screws. And I've also put on a heat sink to dissipate the heat. As you can see, the pinion meshes very nicely with the main gear. There's no slot. And you can turn the main gear by force. In this shot, you can see both the servos and store, and the source plate is perfectly level roll wise and perfectly level pitch wise. So, basically, how I accomplish the centering of the servo is by programming this spectrum servos using the programmer here. And the programmer actually allows me to set the endpoints of the travel. And to control the tail rotor, I have the brush ESC here. This is the brush speed controller from GWS. The model is ICS100E and it can take 3 to 8 cells. These are cells in um, nickel metal hydrate, not lipo. The wires here are soldered to the motor wires and this pair of leads will go to the lipo pack or the flight pack. And here, these are the signal wires and the pigtail here servo connector will go to the receiver. Like a quadcopter, we need a flight controller to control the helicopter. So basically here I'm using the Spectrum AR636H. This is a special flight controller for heli. It has the gyro for the tail rotor, so I do not need a separate gyro to compensate for the tail. And it also has a two-axis stabilizer, meaning there are two accelerometers inside. It should stabilize the roll as well as the pitch. There's two antennas. So everything should fit in nicely. about this heli. It doesn't hurt, see that? Come on. What are you doing?
I guess that was a success. It's able to hover quite well and it does the auto level. But there's quite a strong bit of uh, gas here over here, so I had difficulty trying to keep it at the same spot. Yeah, basically, the lipo pack is here, three cell lipo pack. I just take on some Velcro because it will not fit all the way in. But it will not drop out. CG is just fine. So there you have it. We have converted a two-channel toy into a hobby grade helicopter. Alright, that's all I have. Thank you for watching.